humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against Thee in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please Thee in newness of life, in the honour and glory of Thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and lead you into everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
You have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth. Through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Exodus chapter 14. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites might go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel, and so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry land through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. 
Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after him with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider, he is thrown into the sea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 16. We will say this psalm together. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are the noble, in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out, or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also, my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure. For you do not give me up to shale, or let your faithful ones see the pit. You show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures for evermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever, world without end. Amen. Our New Testament reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 14a, and then verses 22 to 32. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, 
and of that all of us are witnesses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. John, glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening, on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called a twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the marks of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My God, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. A reflection for the second Sunday of Easter. 
Our Gospel reading is taken from the Gospel of Christ according to St John, chapter 20. In our Gospel reading, we are reminded of the story of Doubting Thomas. Thomas hadn't been with the other disciples on that first Easter day evening. Jesus had appeared in the room despite the fact the doors and windows were bolted. Brave, honest Thomas had gone off to grieve on his own, so he missed the meeting with the Lord. And that's why, perhaps, he wanted to put his fingers into the holes, because he didn't believe that the Lord would appear to everybody else, but not to him. Thomas suffered because he had chosen to isolate himself from the community of faith when he most needed it. And it's when we're stunned by sorrow that we most need the company of friends and the support of our faith. We're left to think about the questions, are the doors of our hearts locked? Do we sometimes expect Jesus to show up and visit us so that we too can put our fingers into the holes left by the nails? Are we afraid? Afraid that our normal, well-ordered ways of thinking and doing things are being turned upside down during this period of isolation caused by COVID-19 virus? Are we also afraid that if we open the doors to our hearts and let Jesus in, he'll turn things upside down even more? And because we are separated from each other from normally meeting on a Sunday and midweek, to share the Eucharistic feast. We also grieve for the separation from the Eucharist. And this isn't a new phenomenon. Generations of Christians have been separated from the Eucharist for different reasons. And indeed, the writings of St. Cyril of Jerusalem tell of this separation. And I'm going to read from some of St. Cyril's writings now. It's called the section, The Heavenly Bread and the Saving Cup. At the Last Supper, Christ said of the bread, This is my body. Who can doubt the truth henceforth? He said of the wine, This is my blood. Who can claim that it is not his blood? Let us then, with full conviction, receive the bread and wine as Christ's body and blood. The body is given to you in this symbolic form of bread, and the blood is given to you in this symbolic form of wine. Having received them, you are one in body and one in blood with Christ. Thus we become Christ bearers, for his body and blood have been introduced into our physical members. Thereby too we become, according to blessed Peter, sharers in the divine nature. Under the old covenant, there were loaves of bread known as showbread, but when the covenant passed, so did they. The bread of the new covenant is of heavenly origin, and the cup is the cup of salvation that sanctifies soul and body alike. For as bread nourishes the body, so does the word nourish the soul. In the Eucharist, then, We must look beyond the everyday bread and wine, for these are in reality Christ's body and blood. Whatever the sense may suggest to you, let faith be assured of the truth. Be certain in faith that what seems to be mere bread to the taste is not mere bread, but Christ's body. And what seems to be mere wine to the taste is truly his blood. This is the bread of which David spoke. The bread strengthens one's spirit as oil brings gladness to the face. Strengthen your soul, therefore, by receiving the bread as the spiritual food it is, and your heart's face will be glad. Let your conscience be pure, and your heart contemplate the Lord's glory. Then you shall advance from glory to glory in Christ Jesus our Lord, to whom be honour, power and glory through all ages. So at this time, 
when we are separated from each other in celebrating the Eucharist. When Father Tim consecrates the elements and you're watching it through YouTube, contemplate a spiritual Eucharist, one where you are at one with the celebrant and receiving our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Our Lord comes to us in many forms, through the people we meet, through the situations we encounter, and yes, through the Eucharist. Our friend, Brother David of the Cistercian Coldy community, talks of this meeting in a poem. It's taken from his collection, The Music of the Ocean, published by Coldy Abbey in 2013. And it's called, How Will We Respond? How do we respond to love when he comes to us in flesh and blood? When he comes to us in those we meet and those who don't belong or in those who have done us wrong? When he comes to us in the midday heat, when he comes in need on a crowded street, when it's easy just to pass? Would we witness with our blood like the martyrs in the past? Do we have freedom to say yes, freedom from fear and selfishness, to say yes to God's love? Or will we know the bitter fruit of a final no? Will we be ready? How will we respond? With love or vain conceit? When he comes to us, when at last we meet. And so, in sharing together a spiritual Eucharist today, may I wish you all a very blessed Eastertide. And please do follow the government directives on self-distancing. Because I want to look forward to meeting you all again and sharing the Eucharistic feast when we're allowed and this coronavirus danger has passed over. Amen. holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. All things come of thee, and of thine own do we give thee. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. Kubula das a chavlan and three medic on it. You bob and serac and hob fair the ochi tea as glory sat I thought, or flaffy ochre go with all due. It is very meet, right, and abandoned duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father. Almighty, everlasting God. 
But chiefly we are bound to praise Thee for the glorious resurrection of Thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For He is the very Paschal Lamb, which was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world. And by His death has destroyed death, and by His rising to life again has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory, praise and thanksgiving be unto Thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, Creator and Sustainer of all things, Maker of humankind in Thine own image, who gave us Thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon Him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. There He made the one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in His Holy Gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that His precious death until his coming again. Gan honey o da trigava de vanu na na tsantai de arta spriklan de rodeo ni no vara a guin vela gachlu ni al derpen an ol o din ha tsantai de vara an goreadu yes i gris bod an gyfran o goi wesfa rocaf dof fai wai when the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, making the memorial of the blessed Passion, mighty resurrection and glorious ascension of thy dearly beloved Son, as he hath commanded us, rejoicing in his gift of the Holy Spirit and looking for his coming again with power and great glory, we thy servants, with all thy holy people, do set forth before thy divine majesty this bread of eternal life, this cup of everlasting salvation. And we beseech thee to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and to grant to us and thy whole church remission of our sins, and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and be numbered in the glorious company of thy saints. And the air of the and the air of 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 
Amen. bread which we break is it not the communion of the body of Christ we who are many are one bread one body for we are all partakers of the one bread we do not presume to come to this thy table O merciful Lord trusting in our own righteousness but in thy manifold and great mercies we're not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. As our Saviour Jesus Christ taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Coffee white Christ, I've got one about with Traguido the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in eternal life. O give thanks unto the Lord, for his mercy endureth for ever.
Almighty God, we thank Thee for feeding us with the body and blood of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, through whom we offer to Thee our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of Thy Spirit to live and work to Thy praise and glory. Amen.
Oh, mm-hmm.